In this episode, we're going to look at the architecture we've created in our REST API. Hi, I'm Mark Bradley and welcome to Testing All The Things, a screencast in which we use live coding to demonstrate different types of testing tools and techniques. In this video, we're going to look at how we use hexagonal architecture to structure the code of our REST API. Let's look at the code. In today's episode of Testing All The Things, we're not actually going to write any code. We're going to review the code we've written for our book API over the past few episodes and look at how we've applied hexagonal architecture to the layout of the code. Hexagonal architecture, or ports and adapters, is a way of laying out your application developed by Alistair Coburn. The approach keeps concerns separated by putting them in separate layers of the application. Let's quickly look at a diagram that shows how our application has been laid out in a hexagonal architecture away. Over here on the left, the first red dot represents our HTTP REST handler. This red dot here is known as the primary adapter. It is the piece of code that starts your application doing something. And in this case, it's the piece of code that starts us in the journey of retrieving a book. If we go and look at the code now, our handler has one function, serve HTTP. This is the application's entry point into HTTP and REST. We get here within our application because it is routed via Gorilla Mux to this function to retrieve a book by its ISBN. Now this function and this layer of our application represented in our diagram here by the circle it's the only piece of our application that should understand HTTP REST and how this endpoint uses that technology. At the top of our code, the code understands the incoming request for a book via HTTP REST. It understands where to obtain the ISBN in the request, and then it needs, knows it needs an interface to get that book it wants. This is here. So it passes the ISBN it obtains in through the interface get book or the book retriever here that we have defined whilst we were writing the tests for our HTTP serve function. In our diagram, the interface book retriever is represented by this red diamond. This is our first port. In hexangle architecture, interfaces are known as ports. They are a boundary between two parts of the application. In this case, boundary between our HTTP layer and our business logic layer. So this port here is implemented by our business logic layer. Going back to our adapter, once our business logic layer interface has returned, it can return a book and an error. Our HTTP REST layer understands what to do when an error is returned and has part of the implementation through our tests understands that there are two specific errors that could come back. The first being a book not found, the other being an invalid ISBN error. Any other error is not expected and it returns a specific 500 status code. If obtaining a book is successful, our HTTP layer knows how to take that book and create a JSON response and how to return it to any consumers. So this piece of code here should be the end of any understanding of HTTP and REST. Beyond here, we should not pass anything that would allow our application to understand that it was started by a call to a RESTful API. So we should not be looking to pass the request or response or any HTTP related objects beyond this layer. And at this point, we don't. We just pass the string ISBN. So if we look at the implementation of our get book interface, it's implemented by our retriever, which is our business logic layer. In the diagram, it is represented by this large central part of the diagram. The business logic is the kind of core of the application is the most important thing. That's why it's nice and big and it sits right in the center. If we go back to it, the business logic of retrieving a book 
we understand within here how an ISBN should be structured. That an ISBN is a string of numeric values. There should only be numeric characters within the string. If that is not the case, and there was a letter in the string, then we would return an invalid ISBN error that was defined by our HTTP layer. The next thing our business logic layer needs to do is it needs to obtain that book from somewhere. It needs a source of book data. During our testing, it has defined and designed another interface, find book by ISBN. So we've created a book finder interface, and that is represented in our diagram by this green diamond here on the right hand side. This is a secondary port and adapter. These are parts of the code that do not trigger the business logic, but are consumed by the business logic or used by the business logic in some way. So that green square is representative of this interface. Now let's go and look at the adapter or the implementation we're using for this interface. The database retriever. This adapter is the PostgreSQL adapter for the book finder interface or port. Within this code, we understand language of Postgres. We understand the table that the books are stored in. We know how to select them from the table using the ISBN that's given. We know how to put that data into a book struct. And if it's successful, we return it. We also understand the error structures or the errors that Postgres could return us. So we understand that an SQL no rows error means there's no data available for the ISBN given. So we hide the fact that our implementation at this point is PostgreSQL by returning a generic book not found error. Or if there's some failure with connecting to Postgres, we return an error failed to retrieve book. Again, this is generic. There's no technology specific errors going beyond the boundary. So going back to our business logic and our diagram, starting over on the left, our business logic has no understanding that it is started by a HTTP REST call because of the interface and not passing any HTTP knowledge over this boundary. And then on the other side of the diagram, on the right hand side of the diagram, the business logic has no understanding that the current implementation allows us to obtain books from Postgres. It just understands that there's some way of obtaining books from a, book, a data store, but it does not understand the implementation. Because for both cases, it's not necessary for the business logic to understand the implementations outside of itself. This shows how we have applied hexagonal architecture layout to our book API. Let's talk through some of the advantages of applying this architectural style to our code. The first advantage, if we look at how we use test-driven development to implement our API, is that the testing was very straightforward. When we were testing the HTTP layer, we didn't have to start understanding how the business logic was going to work. And we definitely didn't have to even understand anything about our data store, because this was very far apart. When we were doing the end-to-end -end tests, we started with basically all of the code here shown represented under this diagram in one function, which worked fine that first end-to-end -end test and the second one really. But once we wanted to start testing cases that were very hard to produce in an end-to-end -end test way, so our 500 response, we had to start breaking the code up. And by defining the interface, by keeping HTTP understanding in one function and defining a very clear interface. The testing was reasonably straightforward and we only had to create one test double dependency in that which represented our business logic. Also by designing out this interface via the testing of our HTTP layer, we saw what our business logic had to do, even if we didn't know how it was going to be implemented at that time. The same statement is true for our business logic testing. At this point, we defined an interface via our tests and designed it out. And we had then an understanding of what the implementation of our adapter for book retrieval would have to do. 
even if we didn't know the finer detail of the implementation. So this way of layering code works really well with test-driven development because it allows you to unit test your way through and then obviously when we got to the implementation of the actual book retriever, the Postgres adapter, we then went over to using integration tests. It allowed us to keep our testing separate and keep our concerns separate. So that's one really great advantage of using this is it really works well with that test-driven approach to developing APIs or application. The other advantage of using this architectural style is it enables you to swap things out as things change without changing the business logic. Our business logic once implemented should remain very stable. It shouldn't really change unless the requirements of the business are going to change. Our business logic code, if we go and look back at it, its only real reason for change at the moment is if the validation of an ISBN changes. So say actually an ISBN should be three numerical characters followed by a dash followed by six numerical characters. Then our business logic would start to change. But other than that, there's no need for our business logic to change. However, if we go back to the diagram, there is a possibility that our primary adapter or our secondary adapter could need to change for a whole host of reasons. The business could decide that it doesn't want to use Postgres anymore and it's moving away from SQL based data stores to document stores. At this point, you would want to change your document store. The only code you'd have to write at this point would be a new adapter for your, say, MongoDB implementation that respects the interface defined by the bookfinder. This implementation would not leak any knowledge of Mongo implementation outside of its own code. And the business logic would be none the wiser to the swap from Postgres to Mongo. This ability to swap out technology also is available to you in the primary adapters. At the moment, our implementation is a HTTP REST JSON endpoint, but we could make changes to the way our API request or response come in. So we could change, say, the request might not change, but we might want to change the response to XML. We could make that change by just creating a new primary adapter that understands the response format required. And instead of rendering our book that comes over this boundary through the adapter into JSON, it knows how to map that into XML. We could also completely swap out the way we communicate here. We could stop using HTTP REST and we could move over to using GraphQL or gRPC or a whole host of different technologies for gaining access to data via an API. Again, without changing the business logic layer or affecting the database we're using. It would be just swapping out this implementation. If we had also implemented a post endpoint for the creation of data, then we could have completely swapped out the technology instead of it being something synchronous. We could have had an asynchronous adapter sitting over here that understands the data coming off of a queue and reacts to it and fires off the same business logic. I hope you found this tour of the code and how we applied hexagonal architecture to it useful. That's all for this episode of Testing All The Things. See you soon. Thank you for watching this episode of Testing All The Things. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please rate and review the video and subscribe to the channel. If you did not and you have any feedback, please leave a comment in the comment section of the video or contact me on Twitter at Braddle.